right, can everyone see my screen with the GitHub? Okay, cool. So we'll go through this, uh, you know, standard process again. So I'm going to, I'm at the November Platoon's Apple Trees repo. So I'm gonna fork it first, fork it to my personal account. And then now it's part of my personal account, Chad Mowbray slash Apple Trees. So I will clone it. And all right, so now I have everything here. So CD and that Apple Trees. So now I'm on master branch. I could do now is just, I could go ahead and create a new branch. So uh, get, uh, check out dash B. Um, okay, so now I'm add feature branch. And I can go ahead and start working on things. So if you look at the, the readme, is this large enough for people? It could be a little you bit bigger. Okay. All right, so you take a look at the, the readme here. So we've got, looks like two classes. There's gonna be uh, Apple, an Apple class and an Apple tree class. So the, the main concept here is now we have more than one class and we somehow have to get them to, to interact, right? So we've been working with just one class or one function or a few functions. So we have to start combining things. But because everything is an object, uh, we can do that pretty easily. All right, so we can look at the, let's just go ahead and look at our files real quick. So we have the Apple, okay, we have an Apple class. It's already stubbed out for us a little bit. We have the Apple tree class. So we have a lot of the basic frameworking done for us right now. And we can look at the, uh, we'll look at the Apple spec file. So we have just one test. Looks like when you create an apple, it's gonna to have to have a diameter that's greater than zero. And we've got the apple tree spec. So it's a little more involved here. Um, but it looks like it's gonna have, apple tree is gonna to have to have an age property. Um, looks like it's gonna have an age tree method. There's a couple other things. We can kind of look through these in more detail in a sec, but we have, a basic idea of what we're working with here. If we go back to the readme, we see that uh, release zero implement uh, the apple tree and apple classes. This is largely done for us, but there's a couple things we can uh, we can change. So we need to be able to call tree.height and tree.age to get the height or age. So we can go ahead and do that now. So we'll go to the apple tree and we'll do so dot uh, height. And let's say trees are starting at zero. So we'll just start it at zero. That age also, we'll just start it at zero. So I just uh, wanted to, to note that on the assessment, a, a few people said things that were not quite right about um, <clears throat> instance attributes that you know they had to be defined in the init that's not that's not the case it is uh, best practice but it doesn't have to be the case so we can in our age tree method we can create a new uh, instance attribute so if we ran this function we go self dot equals whatever then our, our class would have this uh, self dot at attribute. So just a, a, a minor point. Okay, so looks like release zero is basically done. We can go ahead and run the tests and see what happens. So Python tree spec. 
Okay, it ran six tests, bunch of failures, fail, fail, fail. One of the tests passed, so that's nice. There's no apples on the tree, so that's an exception. Okay, an exception that didn't get raised. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we have the apple tree, and let's run the, uh, the apple spec file. Okay, so we have one test and we failed. Apple object has no attribute diameter. So that's kind of an easy one we could fix. So if we were working backwards kind of from the tests and reverse engineering, uh, reverse engineering our actual code. So we need a diameter attribute. So let's go ahead and do that. We can just give it a number and see if our test passed. Okay, so now our, our Apple, our Apple class is is good. Has a self dot diameter, but here we're hard coding seven. So this is this is kind of the minimum to pass the test, but we could do something a little bit, a little bit better where maybe not every apple needs to be the same size. We'll see later if we look through the readme that uh, we're gonna have to run this apple tree runner file, which is gonna basically take the average diameter of a tree. So probably wanna have different values, you don't have to. So there's a number of ways to get, uh, to get a random value. I'm gonna use choice, so I'm gonna import a, something from the Python standard library. So, uh, so from random is, the, random is the standard library. I'll import um, a choice actually. Import choice and this choice will choose a random value from like an array. So choice and Okay, so now uh, when I create an instance, when I create a new apple, create an instance of apple, the diameter is going to be one of these values. So if I run the test again, just to make sure, okay, and none of those values are zero, so we're good. We go back to the readme here. Looks like we need to implement aging. So as a tree ages, it grows taller. Um, and we're going to have the issues with coordinating kind of the values of different attributes. We'll implement an age tree instance that will age your tree one year. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that right now. So age tree is going to age your tree one year. We go back to our apple tree. We already have this age tree function subbed out. So all you have to do is increment age so self dot age plus equals one all right so let's run the apple tree spec file again and this time we passed another test let's see the spec file So the function that we have here is age tree. So I'm just going to copy that. You can look for this here. Sorry to interrupt. Yep, yep, yep. Ask the question. Yeah, go for it. Um, I was wondering if uh, I read on um, on the uh, it's like a form for uh, software stuff, and they said not to throw an exception error, but to throw a type error, because later on. Uh, you want to be able to separate uh, when you're debugging. Is that true or? Um, Are you talking about, where is it, uh, down here or? Yeah, so in the Apple tree uh, Python um, file, uh -huh. yeah, it, throws, it raises an exception instead of a type error. Um, it should, should we be throwing uh, type errors or exceptions? Yeah, so exception is a very general, so, you know, ideally when you're raising exceptions or throwing errors, you're gonna to wanna to be as specific as possible. Um, this is, we're just kind of introducing you to the idea of using exceptions. So this is very generic and, you know, in production code, you would never 
just throw a generic exception with a string like this. So yeah, um, type error would be appropriate in this case because we're trying to access a value or it could be in an attribute error depending on how you implemented it. But yeah, in, in general, yes. So you wanna be, you know, like everything else, you wanna be as specific as possible, but, but you can just raise a general exception. And, and if you have, if, if you're running like, here we're just outright raising an exception, but you can also, you know, more realistically, you'd have a try, a try catch block or try accept block. And then in the accept block, you would look for a specific error and then handle that accordingly. Okay, so you've got uh, age tree. So now we, we can age our tree. Um, you can decide when the tree chop is growing. So we'll we'll look at we've got some more detail here. So we need a height attribute which returns the tree's current height. Okay, I think we have that. We have an age attribute which returns the tree's current age. We got that. Have an age tree method which ages the tree one year and grows the tree a little. Okay, so. We have an age tree method and we're aging the tree, but we also need to make the tree grow. So we have, so far we're not doing anything with this height, this height attribute. So we'll do self dot um, height. We'll just keep it simple. So the tree will grow one, you know, we don't have units. So one, whatever, uh, and it will age one, whatever. So now our age tree method uh, both ages the tree and grows the tree. So we're getting you know a little bit more realistic here. Have uh, an is dead method which returns true if the tree has died. Let's say the tree dies at 100. So is dead is going to have to check if the tree is 100, and it's going to return true or false. So is dead. So if so that um, age greater than or equal to 100, return true. Otherwise, it will return false. All right, so let's go ahead and run our test again just to see where we're at. Okay, so now we only have one failure and one error. So we're passing more tests. Yeah, here we go. So we're passing more tests. We are, let's look for is dead in our spec file. So test is dead. So we create an instance of the apple tree. And then when we first create one, it shouldn't be dead, right? Because it's zero years old. Then here we're directly uh, changing the age property of this instance. And then we're checking if the tree has died. So this is, you know, overkill, obviously. Um, and maybe we don't want anything for thinking about how we're designing our class. Maybe we don't want age to be directly accessible. Um, so maybe you want to mark this as a private attribute, but we don't have to worry about that right now. So we've got our apple tree. It has a height and an age. When we age the tree, we increment both the height and the age. We can check if it's dead, basically. So we'll essentially kill the tree when it's 100 years or more. All right. If we go back here, so it looks like release one is taken care of. I don't, did anyone think of any tests that might be useful that aren't, aren't being covered right now? John, I'm just curious about that. Um, the end of three there where it says, if it's able to grow, uh -huh. there doesn't seems to be some sort of an edge case that's kind of unclear. Yeah, so you could do something like, so presumably if it's dead, it's not able, to grow anymore. 
So you could do a check there. You could do, um, so if self that is dead. So there's a number of things we could do here. Um, for now, we can just return. We'll just kind of make it a, a dead end. So now we won't be able to continue continue to age our tree beyond uh, beyond 100. So we'll check here, and then if it's if it's dead, essentially, if it's 100, then nothing will happen when you call the age tree method. We could also throw an exception or do any number of other things. OK. Um, all right, so release two. So after some number of years, you decide the apple tree starts to bear fruit. Write a method, any apples, which returns true if there are any apples on the tree and false otherwise. OK, so we don't, uh, we haven't dealt with apples yet. So we have this other apple class, which is kind of on its own right now. And it looks like we're going to have to start start incorporating that into our apple tree class. So you can write a method called pick an apple, which will return one of the apples on the tree. Uh, an instance of the apple class. OK, so we haven't explicitly uh, dealt with this, but we're going to have to we're going to have to uh, add apples here. So there's, uh, again, a number of ways we could do this, but we, we could include this in the uh, the age tree, we could make it part of the the tree's aging. We could do something like uh, so if the the apple tree needs to have a bunch of apples in it, so we, we're going to need to store apple instances in our tree. We could use an array for that. So self dot apples to create another uh, another instance attribute called apples. And then here, when we're aging it, we could do self dot age plus equals one, self dot height plus equals one. And then we can add some apples to our tree. So grow some apples. So we, we could add that here and that would be fine, but Let's all let, let's just try adding another method. So def grow apples. All right. So we'll do a so when we grow apples, what we're gonna do is we wanna again we could use probably random a random amount of apples. We could have a set amount and that would be fine. You could also use a random amount. The thing we can do is let's have between, let's say for every year, it produces between five and 10 apples, just as a, a notional value. So we can do that with uh, a for loop for i in range. And we'll also import random here. Get a random integer. Let's do uh, this will give us a random a random number between five and ten, and then we will. Here's kind of I guess the the, the tricky part. So we need to create an instance of an apple. On, on every iteration through the loop, right? But we don't have access to uh, our Apple class, right? So Apple's over here and we need to get it, we need to use it in Apple tree. So we can import that. So just like we've been importing third-party modules, we can import uh, files. So from Apple, the file, apple.py, 
import, and we're going to import the class Apple. So now we can use Apple, the Apple class in our Apple tree class. So we're going to create a new Apple. And then we're going to add that apple to our apples, our apples array. Okay. And notice that we're not using i, we just want to iterate a certain number of times. We're not really using the value. So a convention is to just make this, sorry, an underscore just tells other programmers that you, you don't intend to use this value. Okay, so now we have a, a grow apples method. We've separated that out. So we could write a test for this new uh, grow apples method. So let's go over into our spec file. Write a new test. Test grow apples. Um, we can add a doc string. Um, Thing like that. And we'll create an instance of Apple Tree. And then so what we need to do is, so we're just testing this function in isolation right now. So we give it, looks like we don't have to pass in any parameters and it will append a random number of apples. So we can just call grow apples and then we can check the self.apples property. We're gonna grow the apples and then we're gonna have an assert. And we'll assert greater. Um, so we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll check the length of the apples property. So len and let's just say three. Okay, so what we're doing here is we uh, we want to add a new functionality. We could have added it directly into the age tree method, which would have been fine. But if we pull it out, now we can test it independently as a, as its own function. So that increases the transparency of our code a little bit. And we're testing that when we when we run this, it should add between five and ten apples to self the apples. And that should be what we're testing. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay. So pick an apple, it uh, fails. Test any apples, fails. Okay, so it looks like this test passed. So uh, this test is doing what we want it to do now. So you can be pretty confident that, that this method works. But we can't just call this method uh, anytime we want. It's going to be called only under specific conditions, right? Because our tree isn't going to start growing apples immediately. There's going to be kind of a, a break. So if uh, self dot 
age is greater than, let's just say 10. We'll call grow apples. Run our test again. Okay, so let's keep going through the readme here. So pick an apple. So now that we have apples, right? We have apples on our tree. We need to be able to pick one. So we need to write a method pick, uh, pick an apple, which will return one of the apples on the tree. If you try to pick an apple when there are no apples left, your code should raise an error. So pick an apple. So right now we have this that uh, raises an exception. So we'll check first if um, if there are no apples, then we'll raise an exception. So if So if there are no apples and you try to pick an apple, you'll get an exception. Else, return self dot. We'll remove an apple from uh, our tree and return it. So pop will take something off a list and also returns that value. We should be able to pick an apple and we'll have one fewer apple on our apple tree and also checks uh, and make sure that we can't pick one when there, when there are none. Okay. So let's look at our test pick an apple method. Okay, when you return, so create an apple tree, we're gonna age the tree 10 times, cert equal. So maybe we'll have to, uh, so it, it, it's gonna age this 10 years. So maybe we'll have to change our, our value here. So let's just say, we'll make this five. So our apple tree will start producing when it's five years old. Okay. So now we've passed that test. So what was happening here is that it was aging our tree 10 times and then checking if uh, basically if we had an apple. But so th that's just an example of, you know, we tried to do something that made sense, but we had to go back and change it once we actually looked at the at the test. So Constantly going, you know, here we're using tests to build our code, but you could be, you, you could be getting specs in all, all kinds of forms. You could be getting a, a UML diagram or just um, a message in Slack or anything. All right, so looks like we we're doing pretty well. We're passing most of our tests. We still have one failure yet, which is test any apples. So where is that? Test any apples. When you call the any apples method, it lets you know if there are any apples on the tree. All right, sounds simple enough. So any apples, we haven't done anything with this yet. So it looks like, looks like we just need to return whether or not there are any apples. So return self.apples. So uh, are there any apples? If the length of self the apples is not zero, then that means you do have apples because we're not gonna have negative apples. Um, but notice here we have some redundancy, right? So we doing, I can just highlight this and it's telling me that I'm kind of doing the same, the same thing here. So uh, I can, refactor my code now a little bit, now that I'm repeating myself. So I can do 
if uh, not self dot any apples. So now I'm not uh, duplicating my code. And if I ever want to change the logic of what's happening in, in any apples, maybe I want to add some, uh, I want to add some more robust testing for you know negative values or whatever, I can do that. Question, Chad. Yeah, yeah. For line 33, is that the same as saying if any apples is false? Yeah, so this is, you know, we're doing some uh, twists and turns here, but yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so what, what we're doing here is saying, like, are there any apples at all in the tree? And if there are zero apples, then, then it's false. So, no, there are no apples. And here we're saying, if it's if, if there are no apples, so if, if there are zero apples here, so there are not any apples, then raise this exception. But yeah, we're doing like you know, we're uh, negating a, a boolean a couple times. So we could potentially rewrite this. Uh, so. This is fixed, but you know it might be a good idea that we change the name of the method so we're not negating a negation. Um, but when we run our tests, it looks like everything passed, passes. So that's good. We can kind of double check. Let's take a look at the readme. So we have our pick an apple. So we wrote that. We can now pick an apple. Uh, apple class. Okay. Write test for your methods. Make sure you assert the behavior and side effects. So I'm fairly uh, comfortable with this right now. Does anyone have any issues or questions? See any mistakes? All right. So the next phase is to be able to run this uh, runner. So we have the test. Now we're going to check the runner. So let's just go ahead and run it right off and see what happens. So we have this apple tree runner. Um, we'll run it and then take a look at it. Okay, we got a whole bunch of output. Um, we harvest seven apples. Okay, so the tree is now dead at 100. That looks good. Uh, my apple tree is producing apples at age six. Okay, we set that to five, right? It starts after five. All right, so it looks like this is kind of working. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look and make sure. So we're importing our apple tree class here, just like, we, just like in apple tree, we imported our apple class. So we import apple tree, we can create an instance of apple tree, and then we're going to age the tree uh, until the until there are until basically until there are uh, apples. So we'll age it in this case for five years, and then once it's five years old, well, my apple tree or you know six years old, my apple tree is producing apples. At age should be six. Uh, it aged six, and it's six feet tall. So we made those values kind of operate in parallel. And then while, while the tree is alive, we're going to have, looks like we're going to be doing some apple picking. So as long as the tree is alive, so it's going to be alive from 0 to 100. And while tree is any apples, apple basket .append tree pick an apple. So we're running this, and we're growing our tree to the point where it starts producing apples. Now we're basically going to start picking all of the apples uh, for any given year. So uh, apple basket dot append. So tree dot pick an apple. So our tree dot pick an apple. This returns an apple, right? So this returns an this this method returns an actual uh, apple instance. 
So we're gonna append that here. And then it looks like we're gonna to need to do something else here. We're gonna get the average diameter of every apple. Okay, so that's a little bit more complicated. So we have, uh, let's just kind of think about the logic of how this is all connected. So we have our, our apple class over here, which is not really doing much. Then we have our apple tree and our apple tree at some point is uh, creating instances of apple. And it's, a, it's appending a whole bunch of them to this, uh, to its own apples array. Now, these are, you can think of them as uh, objects basically. So if we wanna access all of the diameters, if we wanna access the, the diameter for every single apple in a given year, how could we do that? You just loop through the array. Okay, so we could loop through an array. Um, why don't I comment the rest of this out for now? And I'll comment that out. So, uh, so I should loop through this apple basket right here. So for any given year, I picked all the apples off the tree and now they're stored in this apple basket. So for apple, And then if I want to see the diameter, how do I how do I get that? Apple dot diameter. Okay. So we'll... Okay. So five, seven, six, seven, six, five, four. So that looks right. So our, our diameters are going to be between four and seven. So note that this, this instance of an apple has made you know, quite a journey at this point. So it started off here in this file, we're using it, we're, we're creating an instance here, and then we're creating a whole bunch of instances and appending them to this array, right? So now the apples have moved from this file over to here, now over to here, and then in the apple tree, runner, we're now removing them from that array or putting them in a new array. And now we want to access that value, but this is perfectly okay in Python. You can do that with functions or objects or you know any variable, you can pass it around as much as you need and it's, it's fine. It may be uh, a little convoluted to trace, but uh, it's, it's absolutely possible. So I'm going to use uh, a list comprehension just because. So what we want to do is um, apple, just like we did, apple.diameter for apple in apple basket. So now average diameter, at least so far, is just going to be an array of all of the diameters. So it's going to have all these values. Um, but we don't just want all of those. We want to get the average. So we could do, there's a built-in Python function. We can sum. So this will add up everything in the array. Then we can divide that by um, the length of apple basket. We'll just print that out. Uh, division by zero. Let me check. Apple basket that append. 
you print out Are you ever using the, the grow apples in, in there somewhere? Um, let's see. Or is that being populated, I should say? So the tree is aging. So it should just run through one year. It looks like that's what it's doing. So the air is coming. OK, yeah, the, the air is coming out. So, so that's fine. Um, I, I cut this off right here. So we're just getting the value for one year for now. So we have all of our apple objects we can see in the array. So the apple basket has got all of these apple instances. And this average diameter, it's getting the diameter for every apple in this basket. It's adding them all together and then dividing by how many apples are in the basket. And that gives us this average, which will be a little different every time. So I can move that we can try running this again okay so we can check the output and just see if it makes sense real quick so it starts growing apples at year six it's six feet high there are six apples with an average diameter of 5.3 inches okay and the next year uh, six apples, the slightly different diameter, average diameter. So this looks like it's basically working. Uh, 10 apples with an average diameter of 1.1. Okay, and it dies at 100, which, it, which makes sense. It's supposed to die at 100. So it looks like this is working. So our runner looks good. Our apple tree spec, we can test our apple spec again. That's good. And if we run this again, that looks good. Um, so I think we're done here, unless anyone sees something that I don't, but does that make sense to you all? Are there questions? All right, I will stop sharing.